Cari amici di Autostyle, oggi Robin Page, Senior Vice President Design della Volvo, ci condurrà su un nuovo sentiero di ricerca verso il futuro prossimo venturo delle auto Volvo o più in generale delle auto. Se Robin non ha bisogno di presentazioni preliminari per il suo ruolo nel design auto, ancora meno ne ha tra i partecipanti ad Autostyle. Ricordiamo bene che nel 2013 ci fece arrivare la Concept Coupé a Villa di Bagno, presso Mantova, su un grande trasporto che mise in pericolo, in qualche misura, qualche capitello dorico della villa. Quel coupé che creò grandissimo interesse anche tra i raffinati per i raffinati interni aprì la strada a una nuova generazione di modelli. Tra questi, nel 2017, Robin, assieme a Maximilian Missoni, ci presentò l'innovativo crossover compatto XC40. L'anno scorso, poi, quando la pandemia ci ha costretti a traslocare sul web, Robin ci ha presentato una nuova tappa della ricerca sull'evoluzione dell'auto. Con la 360C siamo entrati nel mondo della guida autonoma a crescenti livelli di sicurezza. I risultati di queste sperimentazioni lungo, lungo gli anni eh, si possono ora ritrovare nella Concept Recharge, modello elettrico, connesso, ma con interfacce digitali non stressanti, come viene dichiarato, con obiettivo sicurezza, come di consueto, ai massimi livelli. Di questo affascinante progetto ci parlerà oggi Robin, assieme ai tecnici del suo team. Cari amici di Autostyle, nell'augurarvi una buona partecipazione a questo workshop, Prima di affidarvi, come al solito, ad Alessio Tomasetti, consentitemi di ringraziare due persone dello staff del centro Stile Volvo che hanno reso sempre efficaci le comunicazioni con la nostra manifestazione. Peggy Oedgren, attiva per anni, e Emma Verdelin, che di recente ha ricevuto il testimone da Peggy. Grazie. So thank you Roberto for those kind words um, and welcome here to our design studio in Gothenburg, Sweden. My name is Robin Page, I'm head of design at Volvo Cars. We're going to take you through the design story of the Concept Recharge. I'm going to join later uh, the leaders of the design team behind this car um, and we're going to take you through the story, so the inspirations, uh, the renderings, the animations and also show you around the car itself. Now, what is Concept Recharge? For us, this was a manifesto of what electrification brings to Volvo. We've explored here new proportions, new design language. We've looked at sustainability and also in the next generation 
of user experience and what that brings to our next generation of customers. So come and join me. Let's meet the team and tell you the story behind Concept Recharge. So hi, guys. Hello. I'm joined here then with uh, Tijon, our Head of Exterior Design, and also Lisa, our Head of Interior Design. And we're going to uh, yeah, take you through the story behind it. Tijon, maybe start with exterior and, uh, and tell, the, yeah, tell the people the story behind it and what inspired us and uh, what is the kind of new proportions of Concept Recharge. Yeah, excellent. Um, as we start any program, but it, it definitely this one, it all starts with proportion. So this pyramid you see here is the fundamental building block on the bottom, which is proportions is your first read to the car. So sometimes in, in design expression, we talk about first read, second read, and third read. But if we start with the proportion, now this silhouette here that you see is a typical engine-based SUV of today, let's say. Um, and what that really means is that we've been designing cars or for nearly 100 years around an engine meaning increasing that dash to axle, high hood, the impression of power underneath the bonnet, and it creates, uh, we've really perfected this over the last decade at least. Yeah, um, but as we move into a full world of electrification, the game is changing. So rather than designing around an engine and having a high hood to show the power under the bonnet, it's really designed around a flat battery pack on the floor. Mm. And this really pushes the wheels to the corners. Uh, we increase the OD and the size of the wheels to support the weight um, and allows us to get much more interior space and interior volume, uh, volume within the ve vehicle. So increasing the couple distance there. And at the same time, this allows us, there's a big influence from aerodynamics. Yeah. So that's really getting a, a streamlined proportion in the side view silhouette. And, and that's really important with electrification because of course it has a direct relationship with range. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all these factors that have actually changed the proportion of this next generation of, mm -hmm. of cars. So it's a really big step change, I think, mm -hmm. for all the brands moving into electrification. Yeah. Uh, and this is the, the knock-on effect of that. Mm -hmm. But it calls, creates something really interesting and modern. Yep. So it, the word is modern, and we call our proportion here cab modern. And that really is this profile that you see on the screen. The windscreen going fast for this sleek aerodynamic silhouette. The roof comes down, but without compromising the header position because we go with full glass roof on the vehicle. And now you can really see that directly correlated and translated into the car that we have behind us, Concept Recharge. So this is for us to show our vision, our, our vision of the future. So you can see all those points I just illustrated is really captured in this side view. So a bit more equal overhangs rather than long front and short rear or long rear, short front, but a bit more equal sitting well on its wheels. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk a bit about the sketch development in, in the car. And this uh, was quite a challenge for us of going away from, let's say, a grill. Uh, maybe Robin a little bit yeah, why. Yeah, no, I mean, this was a whole journey with uh, the design team because um, we had a few choices here. I mean, one is you could stay with the iconic grill from our previous generation cars. Mm -hmm. um, but the Scandinavian design language is really all about honesty and, uh, and designing for a purpose. And uh, we don't need a grill because we don't need that big air intake for the ice engine. So therefore, we wanted then to create um, a shield so mm -hmm. something that still had architecture and form to it, mm -hmm. but was a really nice clean background to the iron mark and diagonal. Um, and that's the first time that the iron mark and diagonal has actually had a really clean background mm -hmm. and then stands out in yeah. the, the way it should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful sketch here by the designer of really closing off that upper in the front, still having a facial and a powerful and confident expression on the car. Um, and like you mentioned, it gives us this beautiful shield space to present our iconic uh, iron mark and logo mm. um, and keeping the eyes up high the mouth or the expression in the lower is where you need air for battery cooling so that still does have a functional element and why the physiognomy of the face is still related to a human in a way or a mammal mm. um, as we look at the we talk about the form language of the car this is very much in line with our Volvo uh, identity of this solid monolithic volume uh, one of my favorite sculptors is Brancusi um, and he, he's sort of the master of the monolithic volume and used simple carve and shaved sections to create form and sculpture. So thinking of a Volvo as starting as a solid form and then carving away using as minimal line work as possible, mm. following those Scandinavian principles. And you can even see in the little top right corner the clear illustration <laughs> of that sketch. It's a round ball with a shaved and carved volume. And we try to keep that principle throughout the entire vehicle. Mm. Now, here's a front view of the car, and you can see how that shield is so interlocked 
uh, so dogmatic with the headlamps and the split line coming over the hood like it couldn't have been done any other way. And I think that's where you hit the real balance of simplicity and expression. Mm -hmm. So talking about the eyes of the car, this is a, an animation that shows our next generation Thor's hammer. Um, this was also a bit of form follows function, as in our generation on the road now, we have a very clear signature when it's daytime, daytime running light. Um, but at night, we felt that the signature is compromised a little bit when the high beam and low beam come on. Yeah. And that was a chance. I mean, we, we, uh, we have such a strong daylight um, Thor's hammer on our current cars, but there was always that little bit of disappointment that it was diluted at nighttime. Mm. And this was our chance to get something both pure in the daytime and nighttime, mm. and create a, an expression, almost eyes that open and close. Mm. And when you approach the, the concept, you can see that it kind of welcomes you uh, and, and says hello, like yeah. a human expression. Yeah, so it created actually a, a, a result from a, an issue that we were trying to solve. Again, yeah. kind of form follows function, where we have a clear signature both day and night. Yeah. But I've shown you a couple images here in animations. Let's go have a walk to the car and actually see the hammer movement in reality. Mm -hmm. So here on the front end of the vehicle, um, we can see the hammer closed in a daytime running light condition where we have a clear signature, but at nighttime, the hammer would open and present the high beam and low beam modules that would come forward and still create a hammer expression. So if we maybe open and close that a few times, and it creates a balance of sort of personality that's communicated through the car at the same time. It's quite a clever solution. So moving to the rear of the car, we have a very wide and architectural impression here. Um, with again, we use the word shield, but it, that's actually a theme we try to correlate both in the front and the vehicle that has the lamps that kind of interlock and support the whole car. And that's why it's also considered sort of an architectural element for us. Mm. And in this clean sculpted shield area, you can really see this carved and shaved volumes and it puts a nice clean surface to present the, the word and mark yeah, and for us. And this actually shows really well the, the graphics that's created. When you take, you carve out material, you actually create an outline and mm. that becomes the, becomes the graphics mm. of the car. And that is the Volvo design language. You see that on our uh, current cars and you see it now developed into an even Mm. Uh, more beautiful sculpture in mm. their uh, concept. Yeah, it's a very simple, logical, and architectural approach to framing everything. Even mm. the way the split light for the tailgate mm. comes off that shield and is aligned right into the bottom, mm. you know, it couldn't be sort of any other way. And mm. that's where you know you hit that right balance of simplicity um, in the car. Mm -hmm. If we look at the top view, this is where, you know, partnering with uh, Lisa and the interior team on the vehicle, we really mm. tried to get the IP in the interior to go with the exterior. And you can see that most represented here in the, uh, the cameras on the side of the vehicle, how they really align with the IP. And giving this water line around the cabin also helps this architectural feel that you see in the front end here. Um, basically, the, the C pillar or D pillar holding the cabin and the roof up looks like it's planted right, right on the vehicle with the clean water line going throughout mm -hmm. into the front lamp. Now, there's also something that we're uh, showing for the first time on this uh, car. And that's the LiDAR on the roof. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to tell so a little bit about what that. What is the right? LiDAR? Yeah. Now, I mean, uh, we're on a journey now to zero collision. Uh, Volvo is famous for safety. And our ultimate dream is to get to a point where no accidents happen whatsoever, even in a, a small car park. Um, the LiDAR is basically one of these technologies that collects the data and enables us to, um, to waste basically take the journey now into autonomous drive and into this zero collision vision. Now, uh, the engineers always joke with us. They say, okay, uh, humans and the animal world always have the eyes at the top of their head. And that's for a good reason. You get maximum vision forward and collect the best data. You don't have knee, uh, eyes at the bottom of your knees where you can't see everything. So it's important to keep it in the highest place. So we've embraced that and mm -hmm. we've created uh, the LiDAR and positioned it on the top center mm. of the car. Yeah, and we sculpted it in uh, both for aerodynamic benefits where it has this more or less teardrop shape you can see in the sketch on the side view, uh, but this visor that goes around the front. So it, it's really a visor that is seeing out, seeing mm. the road, gathering data that will eventually take us into different levels of autonomy. Mm. So that was a beautiful sketch uh, by the designer. Mm. If we move into the rear 7.8s, this is really where you can also see that cab modern principle where the A-pillar is quite fast, but it is following 
you know, design 101 principles of sort of pointing at, towards the center of the wheel uh, with a more balanced, uh, equal overhangs between the vehicle and very large wheels that support the mass of the car at the corners. Um, this is just a, a slight turntable uh, spin around where you can really get the overall sense of the vehicle. And here's where we start to move into the interior and mm -hmm. see the benefit of this long wheelbase with the wheels being stretched to the corners and this vast space of the interior. And I will hand that over now to Lisa to take us through that. So for the interior, we really wanted to capture the feeling of a living room. So a light and comfortable space, but most importantly, an atmosphere where family can enjoy being together and creating special memories. Let's go and have a look at the space. So here you can see the flat floor uh, given to us by the BEV platform. Also the space between the seats, so it's a really spacious environment. You can see the lightweight design of the furniture there and the blend of these really beautiful materials, both uh, natural and recycled sustainable materials, providing a real Scandinavian timeless elegance. So how did we go about to uh, design this interior then? Um, we put a lot of focus in the second row, in the, in the rear compartment here, because we wanted to create this family space. So really recognizing that we're all different sizes, right? Um, especially children who are growing uh, continuously. Um, so we wanted the car to be able to uh, recognize and adapt accordingly, so everyone feels equally accommodated. So this, the seat cushion um, rises, basically the car realizes the person approaching the seat cushion rises and shortens and this is also to um, make, satisfy the proportions of these little legs uh, together with the footrest that rises. So the seat basically continuously grows with the child for ultimate safety and the child can even record their growth with a little measuring tape on the backrest so that's a really fun little feature. I always love how the court really taken something in a vintage approach where, you, you know, if you have kids, you, you mark a little pencil <laughs> line on the, uh -huh. on the inner closet door or something and it grows yeah. uh, with the kid and it's a, quite a fun uh, yeah, bring interpretation. It, bring it Absolutely. Yeah. It means a big deal mm -hmm. and so do their belongings. So <laughs> <laughs> another benefit of, um, of the high seat position is that then every passenger can also enjoy the same eye height mm -hmm. um, and this gives the, the child a really premium view out of the cabin, out of the side windows to really explore the views. But it also then means that the eye level is the same for increased social interaction mm -hmm. then um, between the family members. So uh, yes, also precious other belongings and what would they like to bring with them into the car? Uh, lots of lovely little things, <laughs> <laughs> but then we need to store them as well safely. Mm -hmm. So here on the door side, you can see uh, we have a very personal space there for the child to hang their backpack with their toys and belongings in. They have a table, they have a small pocket for maybe a phone or these precious little uh, objects and a drinks bottle. So that space is for them and for them only, whereas the center space is more about um, interacting with, with each other. It's a shared space to play games and here you can see how the seats are turned in towards each other. So we have games such as physical games, there's a table that slides forward for that. And then we have also digital games. If you'd like to come a bit closer and have a look at this uh, center area here, you notice on the armrest is a lamp. Um, this is actually our Google lamp. So this lamp projects images on the glass, means we can uh, have educational entertainment, we can have games, and we can also provide a means of communication and also include the front passengers in the games as well. And then we have the practical items, of course, with the family. Uh, we have a rubbish bin, we have a place for wet wipes, and we have some lower areas in the car where you can place your muddy boots and shoes and so on as well. Um, so really thinking about the family through their journey of using the car. If we look at the front compartment now, um, you can see the architecture there. It's really uh, beautifully clean, pure Scandinavian design very lightweight. It has a floating instrument panel top wing profile, which allows for a slim vent underneath there uh, between the architecture. The main architecture has uh, wood, real wood, laid into this uh, shape, and then it's illuminated from behind, so creating a really beautiful ambience to the cabin. And there you can see our main form of interaction there in two display screens, one for the driver that moves with the wheel, 
and a centre touch screen uh, in the middle. Let's talk to Tom about our UX strategy. Yeah, in Tom's the car. Our, our head of UX and uh, I think it's in the car already. Tom, do you want to take us through the UX experience? Absolutely. Welcome to uh, the inside of the concept car. Um, you know, we think about a holistic experience when we, when we were uh, doing this work and so there's a lot of uh, multimodal elements. There's, you know, the, the lamp in the back that, that helps with the voice assistant. Um, there's sound throughout the car um, in, the, in the headrests. We have physical controls in the screens. Um, you know, here we have two screens, one large one for rich information and controls, and then one that's focused for driver information right in the field of uh, view, so it, uh, you get information near you and um, you can glance at it very quickly, and some physical controls, easy to use stocks and some buttons for some of the menus and controls that appear while you're driving. So I'll take you th through uh, the thinking on the screen. You know, we've tried to cr uh, create a, a really special vision for the next generation system and thinking about how do we make a safe UI and a personal UI uh, while simplifying all of the complexity that comes into the car with electrification, autonomous drive, vehicle assists, all of those sorts of things are really uh, have the possibility of make everything complicated, but the team's really done a good job of slimming it down into what's most important for the right point uh, in the journey. When you first get in the car, you have a welcome screen that, that greets you uh, and some components that give you just enough of the uh, controls um, related to what you typically do. Um, so it's a very personalized set of controls, temperature, uh, music uh, and, and some controls. Uh, really streamlining that experience. Uh, when you drive, um, you get more uh, of an informational view and here we have our home screen. Now for us, uh, things need to look good and then they need to work well. So you can see the system now, um, a nice fresh light UI that complements the interior of the car. Um, We've done a lot of work to have the right balance of, of, of information and background contrast on the controls so that things are readable. And we've also thought about the interaction model, which, which I'll take you through in a bit. Um, and so this home screen is something that you as a user can, can customize and get just the right information for you. So in this case, we have a large map so people can plan the route uh, and where they're going and then some widgets. Here we have some range information that um, helps you manage your electric vehicle um, and Spotify uh, to manage your media app. So, you know, m map and media being some of the most um, common things that you do in the car, we wanted to make sure that there was easy access to them. Nice big screen to give you rich content. Now you'll see at the top here, we have map. Uh, uh, control, so that's always available, uh, and we know that navigation is also important, like I said. Um, so we want to give quick, easy access to that where, uh, wherever you are in, a, in the interface. Uh, and then we also have some common controls down here um, in the bottom area. So the bottom row is for common controls like climate settings, applications, that always stays consistent. Um, and then this secondary bar has contextual information that changes based on um, the things that you're doing in the car. Um, here we have a rich uh, view that's taking into account um, or using the sensors in and around the vehicle to, to show you what's happening around the vehicle. Um, but you can see how easy it is to navigate between the different applications, some contextual information and whatnot. Um, and we also have uh, the split view mode where you can set the screen up just the way you like. So um, if you're driving on a road trip and your um, partner is DJing or, or something else, then you can have a split view or you can go to a full screen map mode. Um, so you can get it just, just the way you like. Um, and to get back to the home screen, we have a home button, which always resets your view to that um, initial configuration that you have so that uh, you're always one step away from that basic uh, easy view uh, or the view that you wanted that, you, that you've set up for yourself. So you can always have the right information at your fingertips. 
So that's a little bit about the um, information model over there um, in the CSD. Um, the driver screen gives you the, your driver information, and when you're driving, um, you know it's active and, and shows a lot off uh, our, our, our sensors and a lot of safety information uh, while you're driving. So an assisted driving mode and a, an autonomous driving mode. And uh, Tijan, if you could bring up the video, uh, we can see that um, with information displayed around you and, and the car. Um, and then switching into autonomous drive mode, um, giving you a different view so that you know you're in a different mode and, and, and you can you know, use uh, other features of the car or, or, or talk to your uh, passengers. So uh, that's the dim. And of course, when you reach your destination, um, we have a goodbye screen. So similar to the welcome screen, but now it's uh, bidding you farewell. Um, and a different set of widgets and controls because it's a different situation and what are common things that you do when you leave your car, um, like opening the trunk, um, you know, when you're finished uh, and arrived at your destination. So that's a little bit about, um, you know, the, the HMI and the user experience of the car and, the, and our vision for the future. So I'll take it back to Lisa. Thank you, Tom. Uh, okay, yes, so there's one more area in the car that I'd really like to show you. Um, it's how to accommodate our last family member here, which is the family dog. So in the rear compartment, the um, flat luggage floor folds up origami style to provide a very premium dog space there with a gyro water bottle and together with some tennis balls on the side, which have uh, launch projectors behind them. So if you should stop on a road trip along the way, chance to stretch your legs, um, <laughs> kids can have a run, dog can have a run. There is some beautiful illustrations there by our designer Daniel, um, who does a fantastic job to really capture the emotions of people in his sketches yeah. and how we really can imagine these cars being used uh, and enjoying the experience as and well. And I think that's the delightful bit about Volvo design is that we really think about the user, the lifestyle, mm -hmm. how people really use these cars and I think mm -hmm. this is a great example. Yeah. So it's the real thing. Come and have a look at the real yeah. thing. So here we have the flat uh, load floor and I'm just going to lift that one up and unfold it and there we have our dog space. So here's the gyro uh, water bowl and here we have in the side behind this glass the projecting tennis balls. Um, really beautiful space, uh, really nice materials that then, if not needed, we can fold it back down and then have a clean luggage floor as well. Um, so let's look more into the materials uh, from and sustainability with uh, Robin and Sarah. Over mm. to you. Yeah, so now we get a, a chance to look at, um, at the interior and really go into the materials. I'm joined here uh, with Sarah, our design manager in colour materials. Now, Sarah, you know this more than me, <laughs> in more that sustainability is so important now for our journey. Um, we're exploring in our next generation of cars, obviously recycled materials, um, and they're, they're, we're coming up with some really creative materials there. But this concept was more about the natural materials, because ultimately where we want to get to is that we recycle natural materials. That's the, the full kind of circular economy route. Now we've got some uh, very conceptual and, and nice materials in here. Um, maybe Sarah point out some and let's talk about it, that'd be great. Yes, oh. and I could also say something about using a lot of natural materials oh. that we have had to learn to uh, embrace the, the natural imperfections oh. that uh, it means using oh. these materials. And uh, here we have the, we call Swedish wool uh, every year, the main part of Swedish wool is burnt because um, global production uh, and uh, <coughs> we have cre recreated a production chain, an old Swedish production chain, uh, and created this uh, piece of uh, material. It's uh, very coarse and natural uh, colored and I think it works uh, it makes a very nice contrast to these modern shapes mm -hmm. on the on the seats and on the IP. Yeah, I mean, wool itself is not so much a, a modern material in that sense, no. but it is uh, certainly a natural material that we can mm. really embrace and use in areas of the car that we've never really used it before. Uh, I mean, we've even got it on the instrument panel on here. 
The yeah. beauty of wool, though, is that it is, um, keeps you warm in, in cold conditions and also cool in warm conditions. Yeah. But the thing is that we've developed this as a material that is a, a long-lasting material and easy to live with. Yeah. And that's the innovation for us. Yeah. Really, it has kind of superpowers. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. very strong yeah. um, and also a timeless elegance. Mm -hmm. um, another um, material that we have here on the uh, seat cushion and also on the touch areas on the doors is the tensile fabric. And tensile is uh, cellulose fibers mm -hmm. that um, are made in a very uh, energy efficient production mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And uh, this material has a natural glow, it's very strong and it's also uh, ha has a really ni nice touch and feel. Mm -hmm. And then we have a new material called Nordico. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and this is a material that's made with actually recycled cork bottles, uh, yeah, corks from the wine industry, and also a, a, a part of the wood processing the, in yes. Sweden. And it's a kind of a chemical that comes out of that process, which is a natural one. Um, but maybe point out the Nordico for us. Yeah, it. here uh, we have the Nordico and on some other places as well. And um, uh, here we have also added some textile um, uh, recycled textile materials to make this really nice pattern as mm -hmm. well. And mm. then the other one is, is flax and we've used this in uh, um, hard areas. Um, it's got similar properties actually to carbon fiber but it's a natural material. That's true. Flax is uh, fibers from the lin linseed uh, plant and it, uh, those fibers are really strong and when you um, weave them together or make this kind of uh, structure uh, it gets really strong mm. and uh, make them in, into a composite with uh, plastic. Mm. Uh, it can really be used as a construction uh, part. Yeah, cool. And then of course on the, the carpet we have the wool blend in mm. there as well. And then natural materials such obviously as the, the wood. But on, on this side maybe if you look across you can see some of the illumination coming through the wood. And that's one of the, our new innovations uh, that we can take into production at a later date. Um, obviously you can see it better at night time, that's when yeah. it really comes alive. Yeah, and, and that also uh, makes the warmth in, uh, in this car uh, as a, as a like, glow. Yeah, as a glow. And then uh, obviously this is a Scandinavian living room as a theme, but there's something special with it. Um, Sarah, tell us about that, with the dark carpet and the blue roof. Yeah. Yes, uh, this color uh, scheme in this uh, concept is really all uh, inspired by the Scandinavian or the Swedish nature and we have it j right outside the <laughs> studio. Um, we have the dark warm colored uh, uh, carpet and then the light grey and beige uh, um, mid-tones here and then the really light blue airy feeling on the headlining and on the rear seats. <laughs> So cool. it, I think it makes a very airy mm -hmm. uh, feeling in this car. And also we've got new sustainable materials on the outside. Yes. Maybe show them we as do. well. Mm -hmm. So I could talk a little bit about the exterior color first, maybe. Uh, this, is, um, this exterior color is very light and um, uh, fresh, but yet welcoming. Uh, it's a liquid color that um, in a bright blue, which um, uh, enhances perfectly the body shape. And as a very nice contrast to that, we have a dark brown flax composite material here in a directional pattern, which actually goes all the way around the car. So it's in the front bumper, the side uh, sill moldings, and on the rear as well. And last but not least, uh, we have the tires, 94% fossil free material and also totally free from mineral oil. Yeah, and then I hand over to Robin yeah, so to conclude. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so really, we've given you a, a good overview, I think, of the concept recharge and part of our journey now uh, into the future. As I said, this is a manifesto um, of our electrification journey now and will very much influence our future products. Um, I think we've had a good review of the 
exterior, the new user experience, an overview of the, the interior, of the connection with our, our customers and their lifestyle, and Sara talking about sustainability and, uh, and the future of sustainability and where we take our materials in the future. So I think now's uh, a good time uh, to maybe open the floor now to questions. Um, so back to, uh, back to the team. And yeah, let's see if we can answer your questions for you. Yeah, here we go. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Thank you for this beautiful presentation and all these things that we can just uh, uh, appreciate uh, a lot. Uh, don't worry for the some problem with uh, with the videos, but we can just uh, understand everything and uh, audio was really clear. Uh, yes, we have some questions by our our audience, uh, and I want just. Uh, uh, to put this question to you and to your beautiful team. Uh, for example, how did you approach this, uh, this project uh, uh, in comparison with, to, to the other ones? Hmm. I, uh, I'll start really with this is for us a, a big change um, in the actual portfolio and the way we're thinking. So the company is now moving into full electrification. So the approach for this wasn't a case of just working on, you know, a new design language and next generation of aesthetics. It was actually looking at a completely, you know, looking at the car, the car in a completely fresh way. You know, we, we've started with proportions back to the kind of almost the textbook of, okay, how do we lay out proportions now? We've got this, you know, big factory pack. We need to start moving wheels around. We need to change the overhangs and, Reproportion the cabin because of the aerodynamics. I mean, T. John, we went through this journey uh, yeah. together. Absolutely, it's like re-exploring what you're fundamentally taught in school, in yeah. one way to design around an engine, but uh, maybe at least when we went to school. Yeah. Um, but it's really how do you reshape those proportions? And it's not such an easy job to do when you move things around, especially yeah. when you enter into something you haven't really seen mm. before, and you need to really see things in full size and see how how they appear, how they yeah. sit, how they stand. And also the comparison to our current products and such, we really had to go through quite a journey here to really yeah. you know, align on that. I think as well, um, this car, um, it was during the pandemic as well that we're working on this and that just re-emphasized re really this need to perhaps go on some more longer family road trips instead <laughs> of taking the trip away. and. That was a really great inspiration for us as well. Oh, like right. to efficiency is important on a on a long trip, but also then how do we embrace that inside with, yeah. um, with keeping everybody entertained and you know, keeping all our atmospheric I mean, and we, values up. As one well. of our, our little tasks actually mm -hmm. between us was okay. How how do we get the kids to put the phones down and actually reconnect with the family, and that's why we started playing around with these ideas of, you know get them into a higher position so they can look at the nature around them, have some an area to play together, a communication center uh, between them to bring the, the family back together because we, we see that that's something our customers are saying, you know, the kids are just on their phones in the back of the car all the time. Mm. And as a this, this kind of, yeah, I mean, we, we focus on not only individuals, but the family together. Mm. So that was one of our tasks. Yeah. And we actually brought one of our Little kids, Lisa, maybe you want to yeah. tell them about yeah, the process can. here. If you want to share the picture, this is my daughter. <laughs> uh, bring your daughter to work. The best yeah. tester, best tester for this project. Yeah, I mean, we're designing for children, so what best than to, you know, really try real people in, uh, and really make sure Absolutely. we do accommodate them and their needs. So that was yeah. really fun. <laughs> I think she's pointing at the storage system for a, yeah. a pack of sweets that we gave her. <laughs> yeah. But also, so, uh, uh, Another, just a, another area though, uh, yeah. I think touching on Sarah and, and Tom's areas, sustainability is something we see in our customers completely change um, their expectations. This next generation, they want to know where the materials are coming from, uh, how are they processed, um, is it ethical, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and the world is changing pretty quick, and that was a response as well to what we're exploring here is yeah, sustainability. Really. Mm. And, and also we uh, during the pandemic we had to find new ways of uh, solving this yeah, yeah. and uh, you could say the swedish wool was one way of solving it so to, to uh, create the whole, whole yes yeah. yes 
and then the user experience as well, Tom. I mean, mm -hmm. we're finding that uh, people don't want to be overloaded from all their all this kind of technology. Every new technology yeah. we get, just we, we could either throw it at them or we could package it in a nice way that's meaningful. Exactly. I mean, there's so many new technologies and capabilities that are coming into the car. You have electrification, AD, pilot assist, various sensors, apps. Um, and, and so we're really thoughtful about how do we streamline that to just the basics when you need it. It's, it's all there. It's all capable. The, the car is very smart. It's doing a lot of things in the, in the background for people. Yeah. So I think the phrase you, you always quite use and I pick it up is the simplified complexity yep. as you're adding so many things that you want to strip everything down and only present the information that the, the exactly. user needs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can say that the, the main inspiration uh, were uh, sustainability, but also new materials and also the uh, social environment uh, inside and outside of the car. Um, yes, it's, it's really interesting to understand how uh, the transportation uh, design will uh, change uh, in, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, the, the really important one is how the architecture uh, proportions and design language is changing as we move into electrification. Um, you'll see, I think, a big step change over the next few years now with cars coming onto the market that will look very different. Uh, and give people a different experience. Yeah, yeah um, just Lisa and Sara uh, spoke about the coronavirus. And uh, what changed while you, during this, uh, this uh, workflow for the, for the project uh, with, the, with the COVID? Yeah, I think the first thing I'll say is that we didn't change direction in any way. What it did was accelerate us. Um, we started to see that change was happening actually quicker um, so that's one kind of in terms of direction i think we moved towards electrification even quicker then the second part was actually our way of working and that was more accelerating in using digital tools we have a studio excuse me in um, california and china and actually we improved our way of communicating day to day i uh, don't know how you guys found it yeah i mean i was in california for uh some part of this project actually in the earlier phase um, where we utilized uh, VRED and VR techniques to really look at a digital expression of the car in full size and full scale. But the brilliance of it is that we can get in that, that world and collaborate across the globe and talk to each other and point at the car and walk around as if you were there outside in the oh. courtyard in person. Mm. And I think those two tools rapidly accelerated yeah, at the absolutely. same time for communication. Where I know in the past of being in California studio <laughs> that you know <laughs> using some other tools at that time was very cumbersome yeah, and yeah. it was hard enough to, to visualize a PowerPoint by any means through communication. But mm. that's the part that has really yeah. uh, accelerated our digital tool. Um, I think as well, we've been very lucky in Sweden, to be honest, because we're quite a low population in a big space. Um, so actually, the, the lockdown wasn't as extreme as other areas in Europe. Um, Nevertheless, we have people working from home, mm -hmm. um, but we also have the people that needed to be able to work, working here as well. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we, we got up, especially up to this point, very lightly um, compared to others. But nevertheless, I think, one, it improved our way of working, and two, accelerated our journey towards electrification. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, mm, the audience will just put in some questions. If you have uh, some time, uh, I will just uh, will put some question about uh, the audience, just one or, or two, yeah. if you have time, Robin, yeah. tell me. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, for example, they said, uh, um, um, for example, for the uh, XC40, mm -hmm. uh, the cost of uh, recharging, uh, uh, the cost of, of, of uh, just the, 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 the car, uh, it's a little bit high. Do you think it will change uh, in the future for having uh, just to let everyone having uh, uh, an electric car? Yeah, yeah, we, we do. We, we see that, I mean, at the moment, the cost of batteries is quite high relative to, um, to other uh, forms of, of power in the car. Um, but we see that as this carries on into the future, then of course, the sourcing will happen that you get a higher volume and therefore hopefully the price can come down. The technology also gets better. 
So it means that you're maybe using smaller batteries, etc. So we see at first um, it will be throughout the whole industry, it will be a higher price at first, and then later on we see that settling down. Um, and I think uh, you know when we look at the predictions and the graphs of electrification, it is something that's just accelerating, um, you know, on a, on a graph, which means that it's a it's a trajectory that's going to happen, um, and we will see far more electric cars on the road. So mm -hmm. that's why it's super important, I think, for Volvo to be a big part of that uh, journey, and that's why we've dedicated our programs now to being full electric. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And uh, another another question is about uh, uh, just the self-driving car will change something also in the driving behavior. And uh, mm, do you think uh, in which year we'll see it just the self-driving self <laughs> car? The golden question. <laughs> when can we when can we sit in the car and fall asleep or eat our food? Um, the journey for um, AD. Uh, is, is basically a stepping stone journey. Um, our first uh, big thing is to collect data. Um, and that's a big part of the LIDAR and the technology that we've brought into this concept. Um, and this will play out onto our, our next generation of cars so that we can then start collecting lots and lots and lots of data. Once we have that data, we can start then just the, the journey of walking towards AD. Yep. And that will be at different uh, levels. And of course, ultimately, where we want to get to is something like the 360C concept, where it's a full AD car. And then once we're at that full AD position, um, of course, the customer will want different features in the car to uh, either be entertained or to relax or to, to eat food. And I know Tom's <laughs> next to me itching to talk here because this is a, a subject that we're very close to. Um, yeah, Tom, maybe you got some. Yeah, well, uh, we we talk a lot about that, and I think in in this car, the the framework that we developed for the in in car UI supports that transition. So it supports you know manual driving. It it supports using the assess sensors for assisted driving, right? They're avoiding collisions, slowing to the car in front of you, um, understanding what cars are around you, the, those sorts of things, and then progressively getting more and more autonomous, if you will. Um, so what, what's important to think about is how do we, in the, in the uh, near and midterm, figure out how do we transi enable that transition in, in a more seamless way? Because uh, uh, we don't always know how the software will, will play out. Yeah, and so it, that's what we have here. It won't be a, an overnight uh, Thomas drive, wake no. up yeah. the next morning, your car is suddenly 100%, no, no, uh, no. but it will be step-by-step. -step yeah, change. absolutely. It will be probably a, a, a very seamless transition, to be honest. Yeah. Exactly, and, that, and that's what we're thinking about, is how do we make that as seamless as possible yeah. so it's not a jarring experience yeah. every day when you get into your car, and yeah. it, 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 that's something different. Yeah. Okay, thank you also for this uh, answering. Uh, I have to admit that uh, I am an architect, and uh, when I, I see your, your car, the, the Volvo design is uh, like just little architecture and uh, in a car sites <laughs> and uh, i really appreciate that you start uh, from stereometric uh, stereometric uh, element just to carve it and create uh, the starting point uh, of a of a new a new concept of a new car uh, do you think that digital tool are uh, improved this this kind of workflow for you you mean in, in terms of uh, the creation of the, the design process yeah. Like, uh, for example, digital sculpting, not only sketching, two-dimensional sketching, but also sculpting, something like that. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's a whole array of tools that the designers use. I mean, we still start with sketches, even if it's a digital sketch. Mm -hmm. um, we can. There's lots of tools that help us on the journey in terms of, okay, digital modeling, but also checking our aerodynamics very quickly. Um, you can morph and, and change things very quickly. But at the end of the day, we still like to mill out the clay model, have a look at the volumes, have a look at the surfaces, refine a bit, and then capture it and bring it back into the data. Yeah, um, what, the, yeah what the tools allow for the real digital approach is we're, uh, we're using such traditional software as, as Alias uh, Studio, uh, but also okay. looking at polygon tools now to be moving volumes more rapidly. 
So in the early phase, we, we tend to do a lot of digital work. I mean, Volvo has always, always been uh, very digitally driven and we continue to do so, but it allows us to move volumes quick, large, and you com combine that with virtual reality, you can get, get more rapid feeling and approach for the architecture, <laughs> as you said. We use that word a lot, uh, both interior and exterior of really how we frame things. Um, but as Robin said, it's always important to have a full size property uh, to confirm. There's nothing that beats really putting that outside, putting it against a, a car that we know um, from having daily use on and really comparing that and walking around it. There's one thing of doing it digitally, which is awesome and fantastic, but there's nothing that beats it, you know, yeah. really doing a physical model. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again for answering this. And uh, do you know that uh, we are just uh, full of young designers and students that are following these events. And my question for them is, uh, what kind of advice uh, could you oh, give to the, the young designers? I, I think that's a really good question. So I think it's worth us all answering it, to be honest. Uh, I, I can start. I, I would um, say, keep sketching. That's really important. We, it doesn't, you know, there's no point in just kind of rushing a really high quality presentation if you haven't actually gone through the design process and the, and the development of the sketches. Um, I still, we still look at sketches. That's, that's a fundamental part of it. I think the other one is to look broader. Um, it's not just about exterior styling or it's not just about interior styling. Mm. It's about user experience, what the customer wants. Um, sustainability, where is the future uh, of that? It, it's, the, it's the whole package. Mm. And it, it's, uh, it's kind of very challenging for a new student because before it was a little bit more specialized. Mm. Now we expect more of the designers that they think in a, in a bigger kind of broader sense of uh, really thinking through the whole customer. At the end of the day, we're not designing cars for designers, we're designing it for our customers. Mm. So that's just my kind of high level take, but I'll be interested to hear what Sarah thinks to start with. Yeah, um, first, I think um, uh, this uh, sustainability thing has actually added another dimension to the design job. Um, so you need to be much more um, actually educated in how things work and um, uh, a little bit of more technical um, educated, I would say, as a color and material process. designer. Yeah, the process. The, yeah, and and very much asking the questions. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And Lisa, <laughs> how, uh, what's the advice? Yeah, I agree. I think sustainability has opened up a whole new mm -hmm. um, opportunity there. Um, so really uh, understanding their new materials um, and again, form follows function. Yeah, really intelligent design, not the styling. Um, so um, really thinking about the function, the user, how they will use it. In the interior, we use a lot of those polygon modelings for a long time in the concept phase. Designers are really pushing, pulling, stretching. I think be diverse in your ideas so you can really capture an array of different um, array of different ideas. And just never give up. Just keep. Yeah. Just keep. That's, that's good advice. Keep, never give up. <laughs> pick, pick up and try again, and it's another new yeah, fun yeah. challenge. Yeah. yeah. And Tom, from a UX point of view, I mean, you, we have now a lot of UX designers. A, a lot, yes. Different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and we're working not just in the car, but on 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 different devices. And I, and I think the advice that I would give to people, um, it, it's also a very broad space. So. Learn as much as you can of each of those spaces. Uh, yes, you need to learn graphic design and how it looks, but also uh, understanding how to talk to users and, and do user research to, to really understand and empathize with the users to understand their problems and then really uh, work on the sort of interaction design type uh, uh, skills. Um, how do you design those intangible elements of how you step between different screens, how you work with different touch points, how different modalities, voice, sound, all come together to create an experience for those customers um, and our users based on what you've learned about them. Um, and, and also a little bit of, of, about how you know, software and, and technology works so you can understand the constraints and, and the limitations. So I think there's a lot of... Uh, a mixed bag of, of things to learn there and it can be really interesting. 
And then Tijan, let's finish. Yep. Finish it um, I look at a lot of portfolios every day right. <laughs> as we are uh, hiring quite a few. But what I always look for are the fundamentals. And I think they're, they're actually maybe even more important now than ever. Um, so that's uh, how well you can communicate, how well you can draw, how well you can interpret uh, 2D material into 3D objects. I think it's really about that visual communication skill. Do you know what you're drawing? I think that's also part of the, the yeah. thing. Do you, is, your, is your model, whether it's digital or physical, is it really capturing your uh, original sketch? Um, so those are the fundamentals of proportion, building blocks, shading, reflections, highlights, reflected light, sort of the fundamentals that you learn in school, which are extremely important. Um, and not to rush immediately into the, the, the digital tools right away to start building stuff. That could be a way to explore, but it's really how you communicate. Uh, so when I look through a, a portfolio or an applicant, I'm really looking for uh, consistency through the work. Um, I always give advice that... Uh, you're judged by probably your, your worst sketch in your portfolio. And what I, what I say is not to add uh, too much. There's a tendency to want to show 100 pages in your portfolio, uh, but at really editing down to what it represents you the most and really having your own identity and personality through your work. Um, and that does come through in a portfolio. Um, and it's really that gets you kind of in the door for, for an interview or during that process. The other part, as you talked about a, a little bit earlier, it's... Um, uh, never give up, but it's having a, a bit of a thick skin and understanding that um, constructive criticism uh, to not take it personally. And I think that's something mm -hmm. that even when you get into sure. the industry that we consistently talk about with the teams, it's hard sometimes not to take things personally as it really is a, an, an artistic form and its expression. It's your personal idea, your personal creation, but it's really the ones who listen to the feedback and sometimes even listening between the lines yes. uh, and reading um, and reacting to that, understanding uh, the purpose of your design or what you're doing and not just styling, really yeah. to have a story around things. We say the word story around here probably a hundred times a day yeah. <laughs> and uh, how you communicate that through industrial design, visual expression, product design yeah. in general. Yeah, that's good. All right. Thank you so much. So uh, very, very good and precious advices for our our people, our audience. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Robin, Thomas, Tijon, and Lisa, and Sarah. It was uh, beautiful just to have this journey into your new concept. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. Well, yeah. Pleasure. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for yeah. having us. Yeah. Hope you. to see you in person again next year, Robin. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. And thank you for inviting us for, for this one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And we'll try and answer any questions we haven't covered. We can uh, try and answer later. So we'll get back to you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so everybody. much. All right. Bye bye. Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank bye. you. So, so this is a very important journey. It was incredible. But now we have a surprise to you. And uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Francesco Forleo from Auto Technica magazine and uh, I want to discuss with you Francesco about the, the the Volvo concept if you can just join with me and we can just speak about uh, the sustainability and uh, uh, how is going the the Volvo uh, design and uh, it's the new uh, concept uh, and uh, which is the uh, maybe the guidelines of the of the new cars Hi, Francesco. Hi. Nice to again. Hi to everybody. Hi, Alessio. Everything okay? Yeah, everything is okay because okay. we are live and the show must go on. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely. Trouble. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. So, the advice is for our young people who are so uh, precious for, uh, you know. Uh, but what about uh, this new guideline, this new um lines of uh, volvo design what do you think about it okay first of all thanks for your invitation and uh, i'd like to spend just some words about my experience with volvo yeah. because uh, i worked for them um, four years uh, at the time of uh, the c70 coupe cabrio i was living there close to the valla in the forest <laughs> So it was nice. 
I, um, I appreciate a lot the approach the Volvo has uh, with their product, their philosophy. I think that we understood something today that uh, the car is not only a vehicle, it's something more. Uh, of course, the passionate people, uh, is fun to drive, uh, yeah. nice experience, the dynamics and so on. I have also good friends that are expert on the uh, emphasis of driving. But uh, what we realized, in my opinion, is that uh, they made a step forward. So the car is a part of our life uh, where we spend time. Mm -hmm. Time is, is life, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> so this means that uh, the time that, that we, we are spending while we are in the car have to be absolutely, um, you say, appreciate what we are, the effort mm -hmm. that the people is, uh, is applying uh, in that, this kind of project. So what does it mean? That uh, in my opinion, of course, looking at the style, uh, that is uh, the main, uh, the main uh, goal of our, uh, also our, our activity. So I think that uh, there is uh, another very interesting line, very aggressive from the front, but smooth in the, in the back, uh, the, the, the tile gate is nice. Okay. I have some point that uh, well, I just put on the table about uh, the rear window side uh, that mm -hmm. are very narrow. So I'm okay. concerned about that. Probably the people that is living in the car inside uh, is not ever very comfort uh, about uh, looking uh, outside the nature, the road and so on, something like this. So we have to consider that in Sweden, the people drive very smooth, very carefully. Mm -hmm. But not that this is currently not for it for Sweden. Everything is a European car, maybe a USA car. Uh, so I think that the, the, the rear window are um, too narrow. But do you think, Francesco, that this a kind of trend for not only for Volvo yes. uh, design, but also for other other brands? Because uh, when, when I look uh, around uh, just yes. in the street and see new cars, uh, I, I just uh, have the same sensation that you have the, um, the rear part, the rear glass that is re really narrow. Yeah. And yeah. No, uh, so, absolutely. You, you have just inside cameras and other things, but uh, why don't open uh, again uh, to the, yeah. you know, to the environment. Uh, but consider the, the two aspects. You know? From mm -hmm. one side, they are putting a lot of effort, taking care really for the inside life of the car. But meanwhile, the style is, let me say, following the trend, reduce what is the comfort between what the people that is in the car look outside the car. So this is just, just point, pointed out to this car. Of course, this is my rule. <laughs> just pointed out and then we can have discussion with Robin, maybe later on, they will come back on that. So another point, very interesting that I like to discuss and comment with you is uh, the philosophy the Volvo put in the effect that uh, the components of the car have with the environment. So we know that the Volvo is absolutely top on the world about passive safety, active safety, and everything. But a lot of people is not considering well, for example, the aging of the plastic materials. So the plastic material release in the environment with time, in the life of the car, some components that affect uh, the quality of the air, but at Volvo, they are taking care a lot on that. So I think that we have to say thanks to Volvo for that. Uh, I'd like also uh, gets put this to the our young stylist that uh, of course they made some sketches very good, fantastic uh, um, style is uh, moving very, we say very quick into the future. But consider also the material 
that needed to have this kind of a step forward. What do you think about this? I think that is uh, nothing important because uh, we have to be sensitive about the quality. Absolutely, of absolutely, absolutely. So um, another thing I want to say to you, time is running out because uh, we are just a long time and some trouble about uh, the life. But uh, uh, Francesco, from your experience, even in Volvo, uh, I want to uh, ask you some advices for young designers because uh, it's very important. For example, if they want to uh just feel an entry form for volvo which are the the main things that can just prepare for for a good portfolio for example okay i think that uh, let me say some word in this case not only from my experience but also from my current activity with the uh, auto technica magazine so we are testing and evaluate a lot of cars what is my main recommendation to the young designer? Consider that the people is not spending just half an hour in the car, but uh, we have to consider that uh, we are not only passenger. We interact with the car. So please, please consider that uh, we have to have some space, special for the rear low, row, the second row, the legs, because of course it's very good and nice, exciting to have a supercar, two seats, uh, uh, very car aggressive and something like this. But if we spend hour, hours in the car, if we have to travel and consider that in the future the, the top speed in the highway will be reduced, we know this, consider that the in um, in Zverij is 110. In mm -hmm. Norway is 70. The top speed yeah. in the highway. So this means that uh, when we drive and we take a trips, need long time. It's not I just agree with you. so. I think that uh, my what I am expecting from the youngs is okay. Leave in the in the current cars and improve this not only just make a sketch from the what to are in the, your mind this is of what is the power but consider also that you have to leave the cars and I think volvo is teaching us something in that way that's a beautiful advice i'm totally agree with you my dream home car is uh, just an autonomous car so i can just continue to work uh, as an architect inside my car, for example, and finish something in a long trip about four hours, five hours, 20 hours, I don't know, maybe in the future could be possible. And uh, uh, Francesco, thank you for your uh, your time. Uh, thank you for creating this uh, beautiful magazine, Auto Technica, that uh, yes. is uh, just giving even uh, more uh, deep um, information about uh, the yeah. car design world. Uh, I hope I can just recall you during the, the other events. The next event uh, will be with the Ford, so don't miss it next Thursday. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for your time. Before to, to leave, stay with me uh, other seconds, Francesco, because uh, we have a very important contest, uh, uh, Drive the Future Wagon Contest. And so you can just uh, read the link here in the chat. You can just apply and uh, uh, make your, um, your your project on uh, on a new car so it's for young student uh, we want to receive a lot uh, under the number the number of uh, proposals thank you okay. so much see you next thursday thank you francesco thank Goodbye. you alessio and uh, mr artioli and everybody i'm proud to be part of this uh, from auto technica magazine yeah thank you for being a major partner of us Bye. Okay. Bye.